Well, hello there, friends of YouTube. And I hope that wasn't too clickbaity as a title. But yes, I'm claiming a world record, as far as I know, for this little horrible quad. So what are the details of this record, I asked you, uh, Cry, because it doesn't sound like a great distance. Well, I thought it might be fun to see how far you can get one of these little 1S brush quads. So I decided to set out my own set of um, rules. And of course, you're welcome to try uh, and break this, and I'm sure you can, or you're welcome to do your own rules and make your own record up. But I thought what would be quite cool is to have a brushed quad on 1S battery um, under 100 mil uh, motor to motor. This is 80 mil. Um, yeah, and that's about it. So as long as you've got a single 1S LiPo, your motors are less than 100 um, mil apart, uh, you're, you're good to go. Now this one, of course, has uh, a little 25 milliwatt VTX with one of the worst cameras known to man. Um, it has a full range uh, X8R SB receiver, which is stupidly heavy, and it's got the um, antennas coming out at the angles. So I'm always going to be confident it would go far. The problem I had with this quad um, is, is what it's good for. It's great in the garden, a nice sheltered area, you zip it around, not so good for indoors, and outside in wind, it kind of handles really badly. So truth is, I actually tried this once before, and I even made a beautiful video intro about it, and then I attempted to take off and nothing happened. It literally would not get off the ground, full throttle. It was four degrees that day, and I was figuring that these little lipos that came with it were suffering from the cold. Um, on that day, I actually got one of these other lipos in, which was from the, the LT105, the much better quad. Um, and that took off fine, but by that time, it had already gone down and the camera had shorted out from the wetness in the grass, so I couldn't do it then. So I tried again today, and I tried this lipo again, which came with it, and full throttle, it would go up and it would start coming down again. Nothing would happen. So I tried one of these ones again, hopefully less saggy, and I got about two minutes of flight over it, and I thought, oof, that's, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. But I thought I'd try it anyway. So let me take you through the story of possibly the most uncomfortable looking flight I've ever done. Okay, so let's get going. And you'll notice it's only about 3 p.m. here, but the sun has dropped really low and the worst camera in the world that uh, is attached to this doesn't do a particularly great job. But we're off and running, and what I'm trying to do first is get some height because this thing will drop occasionally, very suddenly, and you don't want to be anywhere near the ground when it happens, else you'll be in the grass. At the same time, the higher I go, it's going to be windier. And the wind is up today, I was hoping this little thing would really punch through, but it tends to just blow around in the wind like some old plastic bag, really. This uh, set of hedges down here at the front is about the halfway mark, so it's, it's around about the 200 and something, maybe 300 meters. We're trying to get to the corner of this field. You can see kind of in the top left. Unfortunately, the sun is really not playing ball. Um, and nor is the little 25 milliwatt VTX which is on there. And as we're going further, we're getting a really bad picture from not having a good signal from the VTX and also the fact that I can't see anything into the sun. But just around here, and I don't get as far as I want to, but I decided it's my turnaround point. You can just see the corner of the field here, is where I was getting to and I didn't get too far away from it but at this point especially sort of accidentally spinning around like that I figure it's time to get going you can see the end of the trees that I got to there this this is significant as I'll, I'll come back to it when I'm talking about measuring it now on the way back still not a fantastic picture is it but um, at least the wind is kind of in the right direction it's kind of blowing slightly on the tail and right to left and it's doing really weird things to the yaw it's just all over the place flying this quad in these sort of conditions is just like trying to wrestle a gorilla or something it just wants to go and 
There's so much stick movement I'm putting in here trying to counteract all this, else it would just drop like a stone. But uh, it, it finally clears up and I can see myself and I'm happy, well I say I'm happy, relieved. Um, I'm, I'm fairly confident about being able to find this again because I was trying to fly it in a pretty direct line over just grass and it's got a beeper in it. So I've kind of made it back here and I'm just trying to do a turn to line myself up for a slightly better landing and this thing just wants to blow into a tree. At this point it just runs out of power and let's call that a landing shall we? So how do I know how far it is? Well here's the field I was working from in Google Earth and I was up over in this corner. I wasn't quite all the way in the corner obviously. I'd pop through these trees and so I was about here and working out and if the mouse stops zooming in and out I got, well, this is where I was trying to get to, which I obviously didn't, and this is the corner of the trees I could see. So I reckon that I'd probably got to about here, but conservatively, let's call it here, which is coming up as 521 meters. So I think I can safely claim that I managed to get to half kilometer. So you might be thinking, wow, you're really hard on that quad. It made it all the way in back. What was the problem? The problem was that 90% of that my thumb was all the way full throttle and when it was dropping the only thing I could do is stop and sort of wait for it to hopefully come up again and then try and get it into forward momentum. So it was not a great flight and this thing is just not efficient. I don't know what to mess with it to make it better. It's pretty much a weight thing I guess. Uh, this thing seems to have the same motors and flies like a hundred times better. It's only eight grams lighter, um, but I tend to think because it's the the props are spread out better, it has a bit more better control. But um, I don't know. I'd like to sort of rearrange these and maybe try and, and get even further, but not in this current setup and not with those lipos. But anyway, that is my world record, as as I'm calling it. If it's not, then feel free to tell me, um, and please go out and beat me. I dare you. Uh, you know my rules as I set up, so go out, fly your micros, get yourself a beeper, <laughs> that's pretty important, uh, help you find it because these things can get buried anywhere. Uh, and if you if you break it or know that someone's already done it, then by all means send me, send me a link uh, and I'd love to share it with everybody because I, I think it's a, a fun and silly thing to do, but you know, something to do over Christmas. Anyway, as for now, I'll uh, I'll go polish my world record medal and I'll catch you later. Bye.